So I don't really care who won. Uh, you know, it's preseason. But the good news, Zach Wilson played well, snapped a couple of throws off. Nice downfield throw. The bad news, Makai Becton played seven snaps, pulled himself out. Now he's got confidence issues, weight, health, confidence, should have played 27 snaps. So there's three levels of first-round quarterbacks. You identify immediately, number one, they're a star. Burrow, Herbert, Mahomes, everybody in the building, Lamar Jackson knows, yeah, that's going to work. The second level is they got some talent. There's a reason they were taken in the first. They may be a franchise guy, not for us. Took us a couple years to figure it out, but they're not our guy. We'll try to move them and salvage the pick. And the third is whiff. Everybody in the building mostly by the end of the first year knows we whiff. So the good news about the number two is Trey Lance, Zach Wilson fall into this, is they can play. A Trey Lance, a big, strong, smart athlete, can move around, and Zach Wilson's got a beautiful arm. He snaps, passes off. He makes 40-yard throws. Looks like they're drag routes. He can really throw it. And so what you do with a Trey Lance or a Zach Wilson, Jets did it last night. You set him up to succeed. You're patient. You have a couple of nice plays. You let him show off in the preseason. There's two things to remember. There is always. You're looking to salvage the pick now with Zach Wilson. You're looking to salvage the pick. Trey Lance, they're looking to salvage the pick. What you do is show him off now. I thought Zach Wilson did himself well. Everybody in the league knows he's playing with backups all around him. Looked at ease, easy throws, comfortable, smiling. That's what you want it to look like. Next week or your first game, instead of giving him five attempts, you give him 12, then 15, then 18. Show him off. Remember, the trading deadline this year in the NFL is going to be bananas. It's going to be crazy because four or five teams are going to be tanking right? Because they want to get Caleb Williams and Drake May. So it may be the most active trade deadline ever. Teams are going to be making all sorts of moves. And can you find a team out there that starts three and three? They lose their quarterback. They don't necessarily think Zach is a 10-year guy, but he's got the best arm on the market. He's played in New York. He was good in college. You can talk yourself into Zach Wilson in a fifth-round pick. If you've got a coach on the hot seat, a GM in the hot seat, you start four and three or three and four, and somebody goes down. He's got a nice arm, plays with confidence, uh, looked a little tighter than last year where he could get loose. Uh, Geno Smith and Ryan Tannehill had great second acts. Everybody bailed on Geno Smith. The world bailed on Ryan Tannehill. And I got news for you. Zach Wilson throws a better ball than Ryan Tannehill and Geno Smith. He's got a great arm. He is is what they call an easy thrower. So you try to salvage the pick. You set him up for success. No pressure on him. It's Aaron's job. He can come in, work hard, play with the second team guys, dominate the preseason, show him off. He's going to have at the trade deadline. Somebody's going to lose a quarterback. And if Zach has a great preseason, Sala's like, man, he's a different guy. That's what they're saying in San Francisco. Boy, what a practice by Trey Lance. And you got all sorts of tape on him from college, his rookie year. Remember, he's a highlight guy. There's a lot of highlights with Zach Wilson that are wow. Have a preseason. He'll be the best arm on the market. Doesn't mean he'll be the best quarterback. Week seven, week eight trade deadline. Had a great preseason. Aaron Rodgers is like, wow, somebody's going to get lucky with that guy. That guy's really impressive. Watch the praise, play him, show him off. Trey Lance and Zach Wilson, they could be a franchise guy. Geno and Tannehill had a second act. They're just not going to be the Jets or the Niners franchise guy. Now it's salvage. Now it's praise. Now it's set them up for success. Mikhail Becton, Mikhail Becton, that's a different issue. That's a problem. Supposed to play 25 snaps, played seven. The problem with Mikhail Becton, the bad news is his lack of ability is directly tied to Aaron Rodgers. Because they get an old left tackle and not a great right tackle, and they're trying to salvage this. The difference is they don't want to move him. They want him to work. They need this thing to work. And when you're pulling yourself out, you got confidence issues with your knee. There's health issues. There's weight issues. This is different than Zach Wilson. Zach Wilson could have a very good second act. The Jets need this to work now. They need a left tackle or a right tackle or a movable tackle. Tackles get up to 38, 39 years old like Dwayne Brown. You're not getting 17 starts. So this is a real concern for them. I think if you look at their roster, it's the only thing I worry about. The quarterback's good. I think they could use one more trustable receiver. They're okay at tight end. They're okay. But my issue is they're not very good at tackle. They're old at one and bad at the other. It's almost close to official. The Big Ten, according to Brett McMurphy, reporter, 
is just trying to figure out the financials on Oregon, Washington. They're very close. There's no more information needed. There is no more research needed. Uh, Pete Tamil just tweeted, New York Times, Oregon and Washington are fully engaged with the Big Ten Conference. So it's going to happen real quick. It's just financials now. Do you give Washington and Oregon a full share or not? They're going to be members of the Big Ten. And just think of this top eight. Ohio State, Michigan, Penn State, USC, Washington, Wisconsin, UCLA, and Oregon. That's a really good top eight. That's big brands, some big cities, big stadiums, big money, big fan bases. And the key is three time zones. Start at noon on Fox, end at 1 a.m. on the East Coast, three time zones represented. As great as the SEC is, it'll cannibalize itself a lot of times with all these great games in two windows. You can have five, four or five different games, big brands, every window, the Big Ten. Washington, Oregon can play some night games. So can UCLA. You put USC up there against the Buckeyes, Badgers, Nittany Lions, Wolverines in the day and get a number. The SEC is just a great regional conference. The Big 12 and the ACC are tiny, irrelevant markets. And at this point, who knows what the Pac-12 is? I grew up with it. I love it. I'm over it. The world changes. USC, Washington, and Oregon are the three most committed football programs with the highest ceiling in the Pac-12. They now move to a very good conference, the Big Ten. Utah is the fourth best football program over UCLA, but then the breaks, big markets matter. What can I say? Big Ten is big. Washington and Oregon are halves. USC, UCLA, halves. It's a great conference. Listen, if you pay attention in life, this is really, if you pay attention in life, you're going to see change coming. You're going to prepare for that change, and you're going to get ahead of it. If, if you don't pay attention in life, then you're caught off guard, and you complain about it. And that's where some of the Pac-12 is. USC has been at wit's end for four years in the Pac-12. Washington State and Oregon State were treated the same as USC, and they got tired of it. They've been talking about going independent, joining other conferences for almost half a decade. How do I know? Because I work at a TV company and I hear stuff. So Washington and Oregon are halves. It makes the Big Ten a monster and it makes the Big Ten what even the SEC is not. A bi-coastal national conference with games morning, noon, late afternoon, early evening into 1.30 in the morning East Coast. Going to happen real close, should happen. You can see stuff coming if you're prepared and paying attention. If you're not, you can grovel and complain about it, but this was bound to happen. It's been happening everywhere else in sports. And let's be honest, college football feels more like the pros. Coaches making $10 million, NIL, transfer portal, major TV deals, restructuring conferences. This is the way Football collegiately is going to be going out. Two monster conferences. Hey, for most of my life when I was younger, it was the ACC and the Big East. And you had John Thompson. Nobody complained out East when you had P.J. Carlissimo and Rick Patino and John Thompson and uh, Roly Massimino and the Big East owned college basketball and so did the ACC with Duke and Carolina and NC State. They ran the sport. It was the Big East and I was a West Coast kid. And you know what I said? Oh, I can't wait to watch the games. I lived, in, I, I lived on the beach in Washington State. I didn't give a rip. I loved the Big East. I knew the Pac-12 stunk. I didn't care. I wanted the best. And so college basketball for most of my early life was two conferences crushing everybody. All right. And now it's going to be two college football conferences mostly rolling everybody. Yeah, I, I, I know people at Oregon State. I think they have a really good football team. It stinks for them. But they'll, they'll find their space. Maybe they'll end up in a conference where they can win it three out of four years. It's not a terrible thing. You can make a lot of money going to bowl games, getting into a playoff. Oregon State, Washington State are never getting into the playoff now. Well, what if you have a West Coast conference? Washington State and Oregon State go back and forth winning. And you're an automatic choice to get into the playoff. Life has a way of working out.
Hi, everybody. Thanks for watching. Subscribe here to get the latest from the show. Also, be sure to check out more of the best clips from The Herd or go watch a few segments from other shows on FS1.